Good morning, everybody. Uh, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Uh, it is uh, Tuesday, or Wednesday rather, the 11th of November, uh, Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to all veterans out there. Hope everyone is well. And today I thought I'd take a look at a new distribution of Linux for me. Again, uh, I haven't been into an Arch distro in, a, in quite a while. I thought I would take a look at this one. It caught my eye and uh, up on distro watch and it's called Garuda Linux it's an arch based Linux distro I'm on distrowatch.com now um, it is from India and it has the uh, x86 64 which is 32 bit and 64 bit architecture has a few different desktops uh, and we'll take a look at the KDE because I'm going to install the KDE ultimate uh, distribution here and when we get into it and so um, it is active. It's 46 on the list. Uh, it does have a live media. So let's take a look at Garuda Linux, an Arch-based Linux distribution from India. Let's take a look at it. Okay, I'm back, and uh, let's go ahead and go on out to the Garuda Linux homepage, and here it is. Uh, it is at garudalinux.org. Very nice web page. Uh, take a look at that, and if you go over to the download link, I'll click on that. You can select your language, and uh, the language here is defaults to English. And so if you see English on the screen, that means you're in the English uh, default setting. And you can read about Garuda Linux here. Uh, if you come on down... There's a link here that uh, the link I took, which is the download KDE Ultimate Edition. All right, and what I did was I just did a direct download. So I clicked this direct download link, and it actually launched, I believe, the download itself. Uh, I'm not going to do it again because I've already installed it, but if you click that, uh, it will take you there. And um, yeah, so let me go ahead and cancel that. All right, and but I highly encourage you to read all about Garuda uh, Linux. Uh, as I said, I it's been a while since I've uh, installed an Arch-based Linux. So I've got a lot of respect for Arch, and um, it is a learning curve if you're you know familiar with Debian Linux or Ubuntu or uh, an aptitude-based package manager-based uh, operating system. Um, Arch-based Linux is is a, a bit a bit of a difference, so you'll need to to learn that. All right, so um, now that we've done that, let's go out to, uh, let me go back out here to my uh, hypervisor. Uh, the hypervisor is uh, VirtualBox in this case. I tried to install this in Vertman and I could not get it to run, could not get it to install. Not quite sure, there's something about the uh, Vertman setup that uh, or it's the, the the ISO itself. It, it will not run on a Vert Manager hypervisor. If you can do that, let me know in the comments down below uh, and how you uh, got around that. But with a basic install of Vert Manager, I was not able to get it to run. It locks up every time. So I'm in VirtualBox, and I believe I'm in VirtualBox 6.0, no, 5. VirtualBox 5. Uh, and so let's go ahead and get this thing set up. I'm going to go ahead and click New. This is a very large ISO, by the way. The Ultimate Edition contains over 723,000 packages, um, not 723,000 different individual, um, you know, uh, applications, but packages associated with those applications. So it's quite large, 5.3 gigabytes in size, I believe. All right, so let's go ahead and name this thing. I'm going to call it uh, Garuda uh, KDE. Linux. I'm going to call it two because I already have, uh, or actually three because I already have one set up uh, that I installed earlier and I don't want it to interfere with it. It is type Linux and the version I'm going to go ahead and select Arch Linux 64 bit. All right, so that's the closest architecture we can get to this particular uh, distribution. Let's click next. Uh, I am going to give this thing uh, 8 gigs of RAM, all right, so 8192. Um, 
not sure how well this would run on old architecture. I'm not sure. I've, I've put it on 4 gigs of RAM. It's pretty slow. With 8 gigs, it seems to be fine and responsive. Um, no way you're going to get this to run well on 2 gigs. So look at at least 8 gigs of RAM in your uh, virtual machine or your bare metal install. Now, Garuda Linux, uh, this particular ISO, they recommend you not use virtual machine. I've not had any problem with it. A few minor issues with it, but not, not a big issue. It runs quite well on uh, a virtual machine as well. So, All right, so we got 8 gigs of RAM. Let's go and click Next. Uh, we're going to create a virtual hard disk now, and we're going to create the VDI virtual disk image. Click Next dynamically allocated so it will start out at whatever we give it uh, I mean less than what we give it and then it'll grow to whatever we tell it we want to grow to so let's click next alright so here instead of 8 gigs since this is such a large uh, image that's 5.3 gigabytes as I mentioned I'm going to give this thing 50 gigabytes of uh, VDI space alright let's click create and now, before we launch it, let's go ahead and click on Settings and get in here and tweak this. Uh, we don't need to do anything under General. Under System, let's go ahead and untick the floppy. And then select Hard Disk and move it up in the boot order so that when we restart, it boots up on the installed Garuda Linux rather than the optical disk. And for display, let's go ahead and give this thing 16 uh, megabytes of video uh, memory. For storage, uh, select here if it says empty. Go out and select the uh, Garuda KDE Ultimate uh, ISO. It is a Zen kernel ISO, by the way. So it does use the Zen kernel version 5.9.x. Uh, All right, I have to get that selected. Go ahead and select audio. Uh, ICH AC97 is what I'm selecting here and enabling the audio output. For network, if I select that, uh, it should be on NAT and just change that to bridged adapter because uh, with the bridged adapter your uh, virtual machine will be on the same network as your host machine. All right. The rest of this we can leave alone. Let's go ahead and click OK and get out of it and let's go ahead and fire this thing up. I'm going to leave this in the reduced... Uh, no, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to full screen and let's, let's go ahead and boot this thing. And um, you have to be patient with this because it's going to take a little while to get this thing going. And uh, for me, it came right up to 1920 by 1080 resolution, so I was really happy with that. And VirtualBox, you usually have issues with that, but not with uh, Garuda Linux, so I was really happy with that. All right, so we should get to the uh, installer, and uh, it is a Calamaris installer. Uh, so we'll get to the Calamaris installer here shortly and uh, get this thing installed. Uh, I would anticipate, uh, you know, there, you're going to have to do this in a couple of different phases and uh, for updates and things like that. So it's going to take a while. So you're going to have to be patient. Uh, it is a pretty massive program. Uh, operating system is fairly fairly large and so um, just to let you know uh, this isn't going to be something you're going to get installed in five minutes ten minutes and start using alright so it's uh, still doing its thing and uh, we should be uh, coming up to the installer here shortly Okay, so it um, looks like it's about ready to render here. And here it is. Here's the live desktop for Garuda Linux KDE. It is the KDE desktop, and uh, it looks fairly nice. I thought it was really nice coming out of the box here. Uh, when it does develop, we'll see it. We'll have to double-click the Install button and get it installed for the, the Calamaris installer to come up. All right, so we do have the Garuda welcome screen that pops up. 
and um, waiting for the background to develop and the uh, and the rest, and then we'll get going with this. Here we go. All right, so we have the background developed, and I just want it to settle down so that uh, we don't have any issues. We do have a install Garuda Linux uh, icon out on the desktop. We have this welcome screen here, and uh, we'll talk about this welcome screen when we get it installed, because it will come up again. A couple of things are going to develop. We do have this uh, uh, widget over here that uh, is looking at some things and monitoring some of our uh, RAM and uh, system status and swap and, and that kind of thing, CPU. Um, it says we have updates available, but uh, this is a live uh, image, and so we, uh, we don't want to do anything with that. I'm going to go ahead and click the Install Garuda button. We do have the Conky or the Latte Dock here, I believe it is, the Latte Dock down below, and that's nice. All right, so let's go ahead and install Garuda. So I click that button there, and uh, that should launch the installer. Here it is. Welcome to Garuda Linux Rolling Installer. This is a rolling distribution of Linux. Um, if you're not familiar with what a rolling distribution means, what that means is it's the cutting edge. You get updates all the time. Um, as soon as they're released, you get them. And so that's what Garuda Linux pushes out. And uh, if you don't like uh, rolling Linux uh, distributions, then you won't like Garuda. But I think if you take a look at Garuda Linux, you will like it. I, I know I have it installed already on um, in a virtual machine, and I've been playing with it, and I really like it. All right, and I may install it on bare metal. All right, so we're at the welcome portion. Let's go ahead and click uh, next, and here it uh, automatically detected New York for me, and America, New York. So let's click next. Uh, we're on the English uh, U.S. default keyboard. I'll click Next. For this particular uh, video, I'm going to go ahead and just say Erase the Disk. I'm not going to do anything fancy. So I'm going to select that. No Swap as well. And uh, Master Boot Record. All right, so I'm going to click Next. I'm going to get my name in here. And Callaway uh, Data Pioneer is uh, the uh, username I wanted to select. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, Garuda KDE VM password. I'm going to go ahead and put that in and uh, confirm it. All right, got that okay. Log in automatically without asking for password. No, I'll leave that unticked. Use the same password for the administrator account. No, I want to come down and give it a separate password. So let me put that in. All right, so it matches. Click Next. Here's the layout that we're going to get when uh, it uh, does its thing in the pre in the installer. Partitions, we have one partition, 50 gigabytes in size. And um, Garuda Linux, I will mention, uh, runs on BTRFS only. You cannot install it on any other uh, formatted uh, partition. So that's the B-Tree uh, FS, or it's Butterfuss is another name for it. But it's the B-Tree FS, and that uh, is known for its snapshot ability, for taking snapshots automatically in the system, creating restore points automatically, just like Windows. Very nice uh, file system, by the way. Uh, B-Tree FS, or Butterfuss. I'll click Install. And go ahead and says that the Garuda installer is about to make changes to your disk in order to install Garuda rolling. Uh, you will not be able to undo these changes, and this is true. So let me go ahead and click Install now and get this thing launched. All right, so it's it's launching the uh, Welcome to Garuda Linux. And um, I'm going to go ahead and let this run, and when it's completed, I'll come back. Okay, so we, uh, we are at the end of the installation process. Um, it did uh, take a while. It took about 15 minutes to unpack um, the 723,168 packages here in this uh, image. Let me go ahead and click the uh, Restart Now box and select Next and get this thing uh, restarted. Let's click Done. Okay, and so um, here it comes. And when it comes up and reboots, we'll get in and take a look at it. 
should boot up and it does boots up on the hard drive and let me uh, hit the enter key and get it launched and then we can get into Garuda and we'll get to the second part of this uh, video which is the uh, uh, review portion of the video this is the system setup in this portion and um, didn't want you to have to sit through 15 minutes of installs alright so we're at the login screen now and so let me go ahead and put my password in enter key and let this thing uh, come up with 8 gigs of RAM and a virtual machine you should not have any issues with it uh, performing responsively I didn't anyway um, I do have 16 gigs of RAM in my host machine I'm allocating half of that to this particular virtual machine okay so here it is uh, we do have two screens here I'm not quite sure why uh, but don't close any one of them just use the second screen you've got the welcome screen behind it and you got some things going on in behind here um, the reason that I say don't close this is because if you close this screen it's going to open it up again so um, just let it come up and uh, this won't come up again once you've uh, finished with it alright let me click the wired connection and close that and uh, so let me get back in here now this particular screen is a welcome to the initial setup assistant so this is the setup assistant for Garuda uh, KDE uh, Linux Ultimate first thing you're going to do is get the initial mirror list or download list of packages and so let me go ahead and select one and hit enter key and uh, so the mirrors are going to come up here in a moment and it says if no mirrors are found select the German servers alright so here we have the uh, the list that came up um, I have uh, it's got United States and include HTTPS mirrors that's fine I'm gonna go ahead and select a couple of others in addition to the US I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, Belgium and uh, I believe I will also select the UK and Germany all right, you can select worldwide and just take them all if you like. That's fine, but uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and select those for now. I'm gonna click OK. All right, and so uh, once that is accomplished, the next thing is to update the system. Now this will take some time, and so I'm gonna go ahead and hit two, hit enter, and be patient because you think nothing's happening, but something is happening in the background, and eventually you're gonna get a screen pop up uh, it looks like a terminal console it will pop up and uh, it'll walk you through the uh, update process there's going to be several hundred packages that need to be updated and um, so you're just going to have to be patient and walk through those hit the enter key again just to make sure okay there we go you might have to hit the enter key a second time all right, here's the, the list. All right, and so I'm going to save to etsypacman.d forward slash mirror list those, and then uh, we should get that uh, authentication screen. But then you need to put in your uh, user's password. Click OK. And uh, it's prompting me for it again maybe I entered it wrong let me try it again if you get prompted for it a second time go ahead and just put it in a second time all right so it synchronized the package database so the core extra community multi-lib and the chaotic AUR uh, it synchronized those um, So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, debloat the system. All right, so for debloating the system, this shows you what's installed and what you can remove. Uh, the ones that are installed here, Firefox and RetroArch and Telegram, okay? So um, I, uh, I'm just going to leave it the way it is, all right? And so I'm going to go ahead and 
You can deselect some of these if you like to remove, um, but that's your choice. I'm just going to go ahead and close it for purposes of this uh, video. All right, let me go ahead and close this out. This browser that pops up and uh, close the tabs. All right, and so let's go ahead and select uh, disable the CPU mitigations. So I'm going to hit 5, enter. And uh, so on this screen, um, you can take a look at this. I left this the way it was. I didn't change anything, so I'm going to go ahead and close. But you may look at this and, and decide to change something. All right. So um, I'm going to, uh, this is the light and ultimate version. This is the list that I've been following. If you've got the light only, then you'll follow this list. But at the end, you'll want to exit and delete the assistant. And so let me go ahead and select 10 and hit enter. And that deletes the assistant. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, close the welcome screen. Let's go ahead and close this particular screen. Let's reboot the system. Uh, and uh, get a fresh reboot. All right, so I'm going to go out and let's wait first of all for Wine configuration to come up. This comes up, and so let's click the Install button here. Let Wine install. This does come with Wine. Wine is your Windows uh, emulator, so you can run Windows programs in Linux. It's nice if you've ever used it. I have. Says it's installing and it should be installed here momentarily and should close automatically for us, I believe. Once it's finished its configuration, it's updating to the latest version of Wine. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, yeah, let me let that finish here. It popped up again for some reason. It should close automatically. Well, let's come up to here and select it and select Leave. And let's do a restart. Let's restart the system. <laughs> and when it restarts, we'll come up, and the first thing we'll do is we'll run HTOP and see um, how much uh, memory we're using here, how much RAM. Let's hit uh, Enter key. And um, so you let this uh, fire up and uh, reboot. It should come up much faster than before, and it does. And let's go ahead and put in the password again. Hit enter, and um, it's got the same look as Windows uh, booting up, which I kind of like. The developers here for Garuda KDE Linux, they did a great job on this, by the way. Um, I mean, if you had to develop what they have here on your own, it would take a long time to uh, compile all of these applications and everything. So they do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Okay, so we've got it coming up. We've got the Latte Doc up and running. Uh, we've got the uh, welcome screen up and running as well. Looking good. Um, it says there's some updates available. That's really the first thing you should do is do the updates, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to skip the updates for now because that does take quite a bit of time. In fact, uh, the first time I ran through this, the updates, see there's 382 of them. It took about 15 minutes to uh, install. So just go ahead and select that and, uh, and update it, or you can go into the console or the terminal and do that as well if you, if you know Arch uh, Package Manager, Pac-Man. You can do that and uh, run that yourself. Uh, I don't want to have you sit through a long update process here. All right, so um, for now, let's go ahead and um, this is the Pac-Man Manager. This is the uh, console. Let's go ahead and fire up the console. And here's the console. And uh, I'm going to stretch this out so we can see this a little bit better. All right, and uh, let me pull that up. All right, let me pull that out a little more so you can see. All right, and so let me go ahead and uh, run HTOP. Should be installed already. And there we go. All right, so we are running, uh, and I did tell you this is a beefy application, 
uh, I've given this thing 8 gigs of RAM and you can see it's already using out of the box on a new in, uh, restart of the system, fresh restart. It's already using 1.3 uh, 1 gigs of RAM. All right, now I am running uh, a um, simple setup, a simple screen recorder uh, video recording uh, application in the background on the host. Uh, but that shouldn't be indicative. It should not re be reflected here. So this is what the system on the virtual machine is using. So it's using 1.31 gigs out of 7.77. Normally, in an Arch-based system, uh, this is around 7 or 800 megs. So this is being a, a big system. Uh, it's using more uh, of the uh, resources available to us. CPUs at 21.3%. We've got uh, 106 tasks, 216 threads, one running. Load averages, uh, 1.99 for one minute, 1.58 for five, and 0.69 for 15 minutes. We've been up for about three minutes and 33 seconds according to this. We have no swap. Uh, so um, this is HTOP. All right. So let's go ahead and close HTOP, get out of the terminal. And uh, let me do a uname. Tech A, and you can see that it's uh, Garuda Linux KDE VM. It's running the 5.9.1 Zen2 Zen kernel, uh, which is a uh, more intensive kernel than the normal kernel for Linux. Um, that does come with the Arch KDE Ultimate. I like that, and it is a high version 5.9.1. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. Exit out of that. So let's take a look at the uh, welcome screen here. So we're on the general tab, and this is the Garuda Linux Golden Eagle. Uh, and, uh, and so we have Bitwarden. We have the, uh, under web services, we have Private Bin. We have uh, CryptPad, Garuda Meet, Garuda Cloud, and uh, StatPing. We've got Woogle and Cirex. All right. Under support, we have Website, Forum, wiki so those are three things that you can take advantage of on this uh, particular distro of Linux uh, so you get a lot of support here uh, community wise to help you out GitLab, you've got an FAQ uh, and you've got the repository for contact us you've got telegram Twitter and element let's go over to tools and so for tools you've got the Garuda settings the boot options the network assistant, we just closed that as, uh, as a matter of fact. Partition manager, time shift, if you've never used time shift, this is a backup utility. I use it uh, in Farron OS. You got system cleaner and you've got software. For maintenance, you've got the upgrade system, so you can upgrade your system from here. Uh, so you might want to leave this, show this dialog at startup checked, so every time you reboot the system, this pops up. Reinstall all packages, which is nice. So if you have a screw up of some kind, you can reinstall all your packages. Refresh the mirrors. You can edit your repositories. You can clear your cache, clear your package cache, remove the orphans, remove the database lock. Uh, for the better Butterfuss file system here, you've got the uh, FS trim, so you can trim the file system. Scrub. You've got defragment. Uh, so if you're running a uh, it's on a virtual machine, it's not a big deal. Uh, if you're on bare metal, if you're running a regular uh, spinning hard drive, not a problem. But if you're running an SSD, I would not recommend you defragment it. You've got a balance here, and then this shows you the disk space and, um, and the sizes of the uh, various devices that you have on the system. Uh, quick access, you've got media, screenshot, screen recorder, audio recorder, camera, screen cam, for network, you've got Wi-Fi support, Bluetooth, hotspot, GPS, and airplane mode. Uh, on off, you've got night mode, uh, power save, performance, uh, KBD backlight, DPMS. For rotate, you've got auto rotate, normal, left, right, and invert. For hardware, you've got camera off, keyboard off, touchpad off. You're all on right now. Uh, Touchscreen off and flashlight. For control, you've got audio control, you've got your microphone control, your brightness control, 
your leave options for lock screen, log out, sleep, hibernate, power off, and reboot. For extended power menu, you've got reboot to UEFI or uh, Universal Extensible Firmware inter Interface, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. Hybrid sleep and suspend, then hibernate. For settings here, you've got uh, a whole gamut of Samba support, uh, printing support, input methods, uh, guest user uh, support here, ad guard uh, for a DNS ad guard uh, for, to prevent uh, ads from uh, infiltrating your system. And then you've got something called HIDPI for uh, your visual graphics. All right. So that's uh, your welcome screen. I'm going to go ahead and close it for now. All right, so up above here, you've got this uh, panel. And one of the things you've got here is this menu. So if you select Menu, then you've got all of your applications showing up here. So you've got Development. All right, so I'm going to run through this fairly quickly. I'm not going to look at any of these because it would take forever. Uh, you'll need to do that yourself. I may touch on one or two as we go along. Cuttlefish. Uh, you get not even sure what that is. You got icon browser, compare, localize, plasma uh, engineer, plasma global, plasma theme, cute assistant, cute designer, cute linguist, etc. etc. All right, for education, you've got LibreOffice. We do have the LibreOffice suite. For games, you've got uh, a whole gamut of games. For graphics, you've got uh, these available here Gwenview. Uh, Krita is in, in here, LibreOffice Draw is here, Ocular, which is the PDF viewer, which I love, ScanLight for scanners, I have a scanner. Internet here, you've got a whole host of things, guys. You've got Firefox, Fractal KDE Connect, uh, if, you've never, if you've ever used KDE Connect, you know how great that is. NitroShare, uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, Qubit Torrent, Steam, you've got a whole host of Steam for your Steam games. And then uh, you've got uh, you know Thunderbird for your mail client. All right, for Lost and Found, you've got those. For multimedia, you've got the uh, usual players, Caden Live, which I use for editing my videos. Um, and we've got OBS Studio here as well. So you've got a bunch of applications here you can take advantage of. VLC Media Player. For Office, you've got the full Office suite. Uh, and so let's go ahead and fire up LibreOffice take a look at that. Uh, this is the latest version. You get cutting edge out of the box here uh, with uh, Garuda Linux, by the way. And so here's your, uh, your LibreOffice suite, so help and about LibreOffice. It is version 7.0.2.2. All right. So you do have the latest uh, version of LibreOffice. Let's close that. All right, and you get uh, rolling releases uh, all the time, all right? So anticipate rolling releases coming to you all the time. And a rolling release means it's as soon as they're released to the developers, from the developers, rather, you get them. And uh, so you'll be installing a lot of updates. Uh, so this is your settings area, okay? A lot of things to do here. System, a bunch of things in here as well. Um, Dolphin is the... Um, file manager and if you've got a firewall here as well you've got the uh, here's the Garuda welcome screen if you close it accidentally you want it back you can go into system and get it back that way you've got HTOP out of the box here you've got KSysGuard console which is your terminal utilities here you've got a bunch of utilities available to you um, app image launcher you've got uh, fire file light you've got um, KFind, KCalc, uh, Cleopatra for crypto. Uh, crypto. Uh, you've got uh, KMouse Tool, Nextcloud, KVantum Manager, and then you've got Wine Support. So you've got uh, Browse C Drive, uh, Configure Wine. So when you're running your Windows applications in Linux, you can access the C Drive that way. And so a lot of support available as well there. Okay, you've got your virtual work uh, desktops. You've got desktop one and two. You can add those, uh, add more to those rather. So you right click and configure that. All right, and you've got the in the middle of the screen here. You've got your time and date, November 11 at 10:41 a.m. 
currently. And if I click that, it shows me my calendar. It shows me my uh, sound as well over here. Weather is not configured, but I'm going to do that here momentarily. All right, so over here you've got network activity. You've got Kate Sessions. You've got Please Configure. If I click that, that's the weather report. I'm going to go out and select that. And um, so let's go back and do it again. I missed it. All right, so when it pops up, I um, thought it was going to pop up anyway. Hold on a moment. Let's see if I can get that to pop up. I can't get it to pop up today for some reason. Uh, let's see. If I right-click and configure the weather report, let's try that. All right, here we go. So let's come down. And location, I'm going to click Choose. And I know that Asheville, which is my hometown, is on the list. But I'm going to select NOAA National Weather. Select, it, select the box here and select Asheville. And how do I know Asheville is going to be on the list? Because that's where NOAA was originally. All right. And so I'm going to go search. It's going to should find it, and it does. I'm going to select it and select select. All right. I'm going to choose to update it every 30 minutes. I'm going to click apply and OK. And now when I come back up to weather, if I select it, it gives me my local weather for Asheville Regional Airport. All right. Very nice. All right, so the rest of this, we got uh, 382 updates available. We've got uh, Garuda Settings Manager. So if I select that, you can see what that looks like when it opens. And so it's, for some reason, not opening for me. Let me just go by that for now. Updates, here we've got uh, Yakawaki. That's the pull-down uh, terminal window, which is kind of nice. I like that. Let me go ahead and click exit, type in exit, close that out. Um, no input window, we've got your volume selector here. You've got your most recent device. You've got your networks. I'm running a wired connection. And then you've got your user switcher over here. Uh, let's go down to the, the, the Lottie dock. In the Latte dock, you've got your application dashboard. If you select that menu, here are all of your... Um, things here that are available from the menu that was in the upper left. And so for system here, that wouldn't pop up for some reason. This is what it's available, and that's, that's why I didn't worry about it. All right, so let's, uh, let's close that. Um, we've got Dolphin, which is your file manager. So if I select Dolphin, it opens that up. And uh, for Dolphin, you've got your desktop, your documents, your downloads, music, pictures, public templates, and videos. Uh, let me click on networks. I have some Samba shares out on the network. Let me see if it'll find it. And so if I select network here, um, let's see if it finds it for me. Uh, let me go back. Let me select Samba shares. That might work better. And so if I select uh, network, see if it finds it here. Could not connect. All right, that's not going to find it that way. Um, Raspberry Pi is what it's on. Let's see if it finds it that way. Could not connect. All right, so I, I connected earlier, and I don't know why it's not letting me connect now. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so but it did connect fine. All right, so let's go on. We have Firefox, and so we have the Firefox web browser. And uh, we'll see what version of Firefox we're running here. And we turn uh, Bitwarden, take that off. And OK, got it here. All right, so for Firefox, let's look at the version we have. So for help and about Firefox, we're running uh, version 82.0, 64-bit. All right, so this is the latest version of Firefox. So this is the bleeding edge, guys. So let me go ahead and close this. And so here, the very first start page for Garuda uh, is a nice little home page here. You might even want to leave that as your home page. You have services such as Cirex and Google and Garuda, uh, Garuda Cloud and Big Blue Button. For more services, you have them over here. CryptPad, I'm going to take a look at some of these. I'm not sure what a lot of these are because I haven't been in Arch for quite a while. And then for the contact us, you have the forum and Telegram and Twitter and that kind of thing. So I may leave that as my uh, homepage. 
So let me go out and see if I can bring up my favorite website. datapioneer-network.org It's the world's most famous website, which is my website being hosted by my Raspberry Pi. And here it is. And so if I click on blog, it takes me out to my blog articles. And my latest blog article is, uh, well, DocuWiki video explaining how to use. And so I uh, should open that up here momentarily. And there we are. So working great. All right. So let's go ahead and close that. And let's close the tabs here. And let's keep going. We've got uh, Thunderbird Mail Client. I don't use Thunderbird Mail. I use the uh, web-based mail application, Proton Mail. Uh, PAMEC Manager. Uh, if you want to click on that, it brings the PAMEC Manager up. And so here it is. And so you can uh, take a look at all of the applications that are installed by clicking the Install button. You can look at uh, updates that need to be done here. It's checking for updates now. Of course, we do have updates. I don't want to install them at this point. You can look at your um, utilities and games and, and other things here. All right, so let me go ahead and close that. Uh, Kate. Kate is a uh, file editor, text editor, and a programming editor. Uh, I don't use Kate, I use LeafPad. All right, so you can use that. Um, we have KCalc, which is a calculator. So if you select the calculator, this is pretty, fairly responsive for a virtual machine. And the developers don't recommend you install this on a virtual machine. They tell you that you may run into issues. And I'm not running into any issues here. So I'm really happy with uh, Garuda Linux KDE. System settings, so you can click that button there, and trash can, all right? And then you've got your latte sidebar button here, which pops up, and you can look at your total CPU usage and your memory usage and any notifications that you have. Uh, you can also select Do Not Disturb as well. And the last thing I want to talk about is this thing right here, which is the little uh, widget off to the side that comes up, and uh, it gives you some system information. Uh, tells you that this is Garuda Linux, that you're running the 5.9.1 Zen kernel. Uh, the user is Data Pioneer. We've been up here for 20 minutes. Um, and um, for CPU status, we've got 9% uh, usage right now. Here are the load averages being shown in, to us. RAM usage, we are at 1.62 gigabytes with 7.77 gigabytes allocated of uh, memory we've got 4.33 free and uh, and then we've got swap space uh, we actually have 1.94 gigabytes of swap it says 50 gigabytes storage uh, KD or uh, VDI space all right and then um, disk IO usage uh, processors running 188 here's some information down below and then memory information down below that all right, so uh, if we want to do uh, a background change, we can do a right click. And if we right click on the desktop, we have things like configure desktop and wallpaper, open with Dolphin. We can create new, so we can create a new folder, new text file, HTML, office document, uh, link to locations, uh, basic link to file or directory, link to, to application here. Uh, we can come down to, to icons, sort by. Uh, various methods, uh, icon size, arrange in, align, uh, lock those as well. Show KRunner, if you're familiar with KRunner, okay. And so let's right click and it can add a panel, it can add widgets, you can uh, lock the screen and you can then also leave the system. So let's configure the desktop and wallpaper. And so for desktop and wallpaper, let's bring this out where we can see it. Quite a selection here, guys, of wallpaper. I'm really happy with the wallpaper we have. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the things that they have offered here. Uh, you can add your own images, of course. You can get new wallpapers here. Um, but I'm really happy with this. Um, for an Arch-based Linux distribution, quite a bit of things to select from here. Let's go up and let's select, uh, let's select that one right there and apply it. And so we get a new wallpaper out here for us. And so there we go. All right. All right, guys. So this is a quick kind of run 
run through here on the review portion. Uh, we did look at quite a few things. Did not install any programs, but if you are familiar with Arch, you can do that directly from the terminal, or you can do that from within here as well. And I showed you some of the uh, ways to do that. And so if you thought this uh, video was helpful, go ahead and uh, select the thumbs up for me, and that will help my, my uh, channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, the Linux Unix Tech channel, please do so and hit that bell so you get notified every time there's a, uh, an update. And so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech channel. Have a great afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye.